do you get when you're between a rock and a hard place? The Insights Show is what you get. A vision born from the dirt is a vision worth more than diamonds. It's a vision for generations to enjoy. The Insights Show is a vision that has been in visionary and executive producer Dr. Carl's arsenal for many years. From conceptualization, development, and now finally the launch. The rock and the hard place was a pandemic and other external factors that have been shaping the diamond in the rough that you see here today. And since reality is virtual, now more than ever before, The Insights Show is redefining visual podcasting with five daily shows per week, hosted by exceptionally smart, witty and diverse people from the motherland South Africa in a state-of-the-art studio. This is The Insights Show. Good morning, good morning, greetings again. Wow, we are back on our show here. I'm so excited about the Inside Show. Warm welcome to everybody watching there by YouTube and all the other platforms available. It is so good to be here. I am your host here this morning. Everybody knows me and my name is Carl Hendricks. Well, this morning, a rather interesting subject. We're going to discuss about the qualities of leaders, more about influences and, and how leadership influence people. It's so important to know that leaders have the ability and the power to influence people. And um, most probably on a very uh, light note, if you can see it in a lighter note, uh, uh, the guy that's a drug lord, he's a, he's a leader. He influences people, good or bad. Uh, the youngsters admire the beautiful cars and they admire the house on the hill and if there's bodyguards and whatever is around them, that's the influencer. Then your uncle, the one the one that you admire, the uncle that helps you wherever he's, whenever he's available and, or your aunt, that's your hero and that's your, that's your leader. And for those in companies, your CEO is your leader. That's the person that influenced you, or you can call him a mentor, whatever you'd like to call him. Then your teacher, it uh, doesn't matter if it's at varsity, high school, primary school, a teacher is surely a leader. And most of the time, a teacher spend most of the time with the, with the kids at school, and mom just get that little bit after work. And so the teacher is really that leader. And then also pastors and, and evangelists and, and, and apostles and bishops and, and professors and all those people are uh, our leaders, they influence people, uh, if it's good or bad here, yeah, and uh, uh, for, for whatever reason. And young people today, uh, they are influenced by the multimedia platforms. It doesn't matter what it is. Some of them on Facebook, others on YouTube, um, uh, others on Instagram, uh, others on Twitter. It doesn't matter, but there is some streams and influence one way or the other. So uh, uh, this morning is all about the leadership and influence, and it's so important for you to understand how important it is to be influenced or, or, or that there must be a, a, a person in your life that influences you, good or bad. And, you know, there's always bridging. You might just agree with me, might not. But between the, your primary and your high school, there's a bridging in there. So your, your child might just do well uh, in primary school, but there's that bridging into senior secondary high school that's important. Then you find another bridging there from from uh, the final here, grade 12 into varsity. That's another bridging. All these bridges there, there's people playing a vital, vital, vital role in that person's life. When you bridge wrong, uh, it's simply the leader there on the other side. That leader, that leader, that person will let you go off the rail or you will accomplish whatever you want to accomplish well this morning um i've got a wonderful person here a beautiful beautiful lady here with with me by the name of evangelique adams she's not just uh, 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 uh any other person is also my daughter my beautiful daughter and uh my only daughter to two boys 
<laughs> so I'm so proud to have her here on the set here, and she had a wonderful journey. What a journey. Uh, you will hear this journey. It's a rather interesting journey. She's going to share about her whole journey. You will learn something out of this journey. I tell you, not just kids will learn out of this journey. High school students will learn out of this journey. Anybody that wants to venture into life will learn out of this journey. Moms will learn out of this journey. What a journey. I, I, uh, on this journey, I'm with her on this journey. And even uh, personally, I'm, I'm busy learning one day at a time with her on this journey. Well, it gives me such great joy and such great pleasure to welcome... Uh, my daughter on the set here with me today in the Inside Studios. Evangelica, warm welcome to you. Thank you. Yeah, it's so good to, you're smiling and laughing just I'm like... laughing like, because you keep saying she's beautiful in my mind. I'm like, you have to say that to my father. Wow, I, I should say that, isn't it? <laughs> I, I guess there's two people that will say that, me and Ashley, your <laughs> husband. He, he should say that. And then later your children will say, Mom, you're beautiful. Mom, you're beautiful. Then as they grow up and, uh, and wait till they get to teenagers and say, Mom, you're ugly with me. Mom, why are you so ugly with me? But that will also come. Evangelica, I also believe that um, besides your journey, and I'm going to really unpack this beautiful journey, uh, you just, you just uh, finished uh, uh, with uh, Mrs. South Africa. And then besides that journey there with your daughter, uh, Scarlett, besides that journey, you also do some interesting things uh, uh, around makeup. How did you start with makeup? I'm surprised because I'm your father, but I didn't see you doing makeup. As a matter of fact, for many years in my house, you did not wear make makeup at all. <laughs> so tell us a little, bit, a little about that. Okay, so um, at school, I did do art. Um, and I think that's where my creative side came in. Mm -hmm. After school, studying interior design mm -hmm. and architectural technology, that also played a role in my creative side. Mm -hmm. But being in the field, once I started temping in interior design and architecture, the creativity side just wasn't there. I didn't enjoy the creativity side to it. And then working after that, Scarlet's thing happening that we will be speaking about later on. Mm -hmm. um, I was forced to find a new me. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the things as women that we tend to do when we're trying to feel better mm -hmm. is put on makeup. <laughs> and <laughs> well, well. Yeah, so I started doing that and my husband did photography at the time and girls came with the wrong foundation color, luckily the same shade as me and I would literally start doing their makeup for their shoots, their modeling portfolios and that is how I slowly started getting into makeup. That's rather interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so you actually started by default. Yes, but it yet was by default. <laughs> you, in that, yesterday we had a very interesting uh, discussion here in the same studio around passion, how important that is. So there was no passion with the architectural side, there was no passion with the interior design. No. There's certain creativities that you didn't enjoy about it but yeah. the minute you pick up a brush and some pencils and some uh, coloring stuff, whatever you call it, <laughs> for a lack of a better word. All of a sudden, you kick in there. Yes. All right. And you started to, to, to develop from there. Tell me, how, how did the development move on from there? So the development moved on. I actually started doing makeup. People actually started calling me because they saw on Ashley's profile that I'm doing the model's makeup. Mm -hmm. And people started contacting me and I started doing weddings as well as um, matric dances. And from there, actually, I entered a competition. <laughs> you, what competition was that? A makeup was, competition? Yes, it was actually to be a makeup artist on Mrs. South Africa. Wow. So um, I was chosen. Rather interesting, yeah. you, were, you were on the other side. You were a makeup artist. <laughs> For Mrs. South Africa on the other side. So you know both sides now. Yes, I know both sides. <laughs> I was laughing because at the Mrs. South Africa event this past Friday, yeah. um, all the ladies was like, why are you sitting here doing your makeup? You can't just do your own makeup. And in my mind, I was just thinking, I was in this makeup artist seat mm -hmm. before. It's not nice when nobody comes to sit on your chair. Mm -hmm. So I thought, we are here for women empowerment. 
um, whether my makeup's not going to look that good, I can always go change it. Mm. But let me give this person uh, opportunity. the same opportunity I yeah. got. And also, and well. also uh, uh, what we will discuss a little, little later on, uh, at least a form of uh, self-esteem, you know, yeah. finding yourself. Because you, uh, you, you never know how you'll damage somebody permanently. Yes. And that's so possible. Well, you know what? Um, uh, you shared earlier that we're going to do a quick five minutes. I want to call our producer, Leandra, into the studio. And uh, you're going to show... And the ladies quickly how to do a five minute makeup. Can you do a five minute makeup? Yeah, any, when you're in a rush, anything is possible to look good. So is this is this for the, the, the mom on the the mom on the go? The mom on the go, the girl that's in a rush didn't know she had plans and yeah. someone's on their way and she just wants to get done and look good. All right. Yeah. So uh, what we're gonna do? Uh, I want you just to talk you through. Uh, our, our technical team here will just uh, turn the mic in a proper position. And then uh, please uh, go ahead. But you need to, you need to, you need to uh, talk us through this whole thing. And uh, you're more than welcome to stand if you'd like to. Yes. You can get off the seat if you'd like to, and then uh, and take us through this. Uh, our technical team will just come around and just get the mic right for you or ready for you, and then we'll take it from there. But you should talk us through because uh, for specifically for those ladies out there. Um, um, tell them what you have and why you have that and how to do it and stuff like that. So uh, take us to that five minute makeup. I might just do it after this show as well for myself. Eh? Yeah. So basically a full face has a lot going into it. There's contouring, there's highlighting, there's so many things. But when you're in a rush, it's not possible to do all those things in five minutes. Okay. So the most important thing is to know yourself, know your face, know what is it that I lack the most, for lack of a better term. Mm. With me, it would be my eyebrows. Mm. Without eyebrows, it's mama with my eyebrows. Yeah. <laughs> but so my most important thing would be to draw my eyebrows first. Mm -hmm. With Leandra over here, she has very strong, dark, full eyebrows. So mm. that isn't something she would concentrate on immediately. So if she happens to leave the house with no fixing of the eyebrows, it's more than okay. So that's what I'm actually going to do. I'm just going to use a brow setter, which is basically like a mascara for mm -hmm. your eyebrows because Leandra's brows is already very dark and formed. For, for those that's, that's watching from uh, on, on, on live stream, on, on YouTube, um, you know, it's rather interesting because this is all about leadership stuff. And sometimes, uh, and we'll share a little bit later there, that uh, you are who you are. And sometimes you just need that one person in your life just to put some makeup on you to be the fullest you that you could be. Okay, what, what, the, uh, what are you putting on there now? So now I am just putting on primer. Every time you do your makeup, um, many people don't like primer. But for a five-minute makeup look, primer is a go-to because... <laughs> keep your makeup on much longer. I'm watching you on time. Eh? You say it's five uh, five minutes uh, uh, on the go. I, I want to see if this is five Let minutes. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm now just going to add foundation and put that in. Let's see. Quickly. So because I didn't do our eyebrows, it's going to go much faster than expected. But if you are someone that has to do the eyebrows first, you'll end up spending most probably one minute to two minutes on your brows depending how much you need to fold them in but because of Leandra's eyebrows we're not doing that so we have much more time to play around with the face rather interesting yeah so uh that that is um a, a makeup on somebody's face and sometimes uh, you just need a friend or a or somebody in a career because we're busy with influencing uh, to, to influence you positively. And I know eventually uh, because she's my daughter for years, she didn't wear makeup. And I was surprised this one day that she, she started wearing makeup. And uh, I must just say she looks so beautiful with makeup on. Even, even better without it, but I don't mind. I don't mind. Makeup is good. <laughs> yeah. I actually started wearing makeup on myself because clients didn't trust that you can do makeup. If you're not looking good, full face, they kind of question your talent. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. yeah, you should talk us through there because we're on live radio here, live podcast. So when you're in a rush, something people always say, don't really use your hands when you're doing makeup. But when I'm in a rush, I literally apply my makeup, my foundation with my fingertips. So as if you were putting cream on your face, it makes it go much faster. There's no streaks or anything like that. 
The other key with five minute makeup as well is to know your foundation shade. So the minute you get the proper foundation, just go in with it and stick to that. So there's different types of foundations, right? Yes. So now um, we're not going to highlight and contour with concealer, but what we are going to do, because it's five minutes, we're going to go in with powder um, contour. So I'm just going to choose the darkest one for a complexion, and we're literally just going to go around her face. If you have a smallish forehead, you don't have to contour as much on the top, but if you're a bit insecure about your forehead, that's when you would contour the top of your forehead. Yeah, for me, it will not just be my forehead, it will be my whole head. Eh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so what, what, what do you call that? Is that a powder now? This is a contour powder, yes. A contour powder. So what the contour powder does, it just um, creates shadows in your face so that you appear skinnier. Um, you can create your cheekbones with it as well. Um, in terms of if you have fat cheeks or you want to look like you a bit more, what do you call it when you go? A finer look. <laughs> <laughs> a more trimmer look. Whatever it is, a more bone structure look. Yeah. For whatever you may call that. Yeah. This is what people usually do when they change the look of the nose shape, the face shape, your chin shape, your jawline. Um, another thing as well is if you have um, a double chin, mm -hmm. you go in with the shadow and you actually put it there. So by adding a darker shade, it creates so much shadow that it looks like you're skinnier. Mm -hmm. So it looks like your chin is creating a shadow, but you actually just ended up putting mm -hmm. a darker foundation, a darker shade. So you're done with the powder now, and now so you're moving I'm over to... I'm now going in with a setting powder. A setting powder? Yes, and I'm just going to set it under the eye. That was my phone, my apologies. <laughs> and um, whatever's left on the brush, we're just going to buff out the rest of the skin to set the foundation. That's a setting powder. Yes. You know, what if you don't know what to buy, where to buy, and how to buy? Is there somebody that can guide you or help you? Somebody that's starting out just doing makeup? Where do you really start for a five-minute makeup on the go? Um, there's the internet. <laughs> the internet. Mr. and Mrs. Google. <laughs> YouTube. Uh, oh, YouTube. <laughs> There's eh? many tutorials. I'm now just going to go in with a blush and go on the apple of her cheeks and blend that into a contour. It's very important that everything blends together. Mm -hmm. So when you do contour, it's important that your blush then blends into your contour. Mm -hmm. So everything has to look smooth, put together and... Right, right. So. We're almost there. And then you go in with some highlight. So what is, what's the purpose of a highlight? Highlight is just to add highlight. <laughs> Definition in certain Definition. areas. Definition. I like to think of it in terms of when you were younger and your mother puts Vaseline on your face. That's it. <laughs> and wherever the sun hits, that's where you want to highlight. Okay, I'm with you. So I'm with you. It's usually on top of your cheekbone over here, on the tip of your nose, and your nose bridge over there. The um, Cupid's bow, you can, depending on your facial structure, this will change depending mm -hmm. what parts you want to highlight. Right. I like to put it under the eyebrow as well, just to add some definition over there. Mm -hmm. And then you just go in with mascara. Right. If you still have time, you can put on some eyeshadow, which you just choose one color that will complement you. Mm. I know I'm into the very Asian makeup inspired look, just look straight into the Asian makeup inspired look. What so is an Asian makeup inspired look? So we all get inspired by something. So exactly. The Western inspired Influence, look. influences. Influence. That's yes. what the, this influence. is what the program is all about. Yes. Influences. <laughs> so you influenced by the Koreans and the, yes. and the, who else there? By the K-dramas. Yeah. So a lot of people are influenced by Western makeup. Yes. Which is your heavy contouring. What's the difference there for between a Western, Western and, uh, and the Eastern so makeup? Western makeup kind of makes you look older. 
and more. Excuse me. <laughs> really? You want to look older, mature, put together. It's your sharp Man. jawline, sharp. Everything must just be sharp. Yeah. Um, Asian is you must look young. You want to look like a baby. What? <laughs> <laughs> but it must look natural. I naturally look young. Oh, my word. So age is such a big thing for them. They use their makeup to look younger. Wow. As where Western uses makeup to look more mature. Basically. More mature. Yeah, look up for me. And we're just going to put on the bottom lash line. This is just the mascara. And then generally that would be finished. Is that five minutes? Yeah, this is, it's a matter of fact, it's a little more than five oh, minutes. Oh, sorry, it's the speaking. <laughs> and then we're just going to setting. Oh, oh sorry. What did on, you put on there? So that's setting spray. Setting spray. Yes, and that's to make sure your makeup stays on the whole day. You usually wait until that dries up and then you're ready to go. <laughs> yeah. So that's about it. That's about so it. So Leandra, before, before, you, before you run... <laughs> Uh, tell us, uh, tell us how's the how's the the, the the inside shows going because you're producing a shows. Are you happy for where we are in the in the in yes. The Yes, so thank you to everybody who was watching. We got some positive, I know, from the ladies, especially when we said that there's an influencer and we're talking influencing and we're talking Mrs. South Africa semi-finalist Evangelique. There were some positive um, responses for today's show and just all the shows so far. So to everybody who has been watching, subscribing, following, just interacting, we thank you guys so much. We've got so much more interesting programs coming up every single day of the week except for Saturdays. So please do keep a lookout for that. And how does my makeup look? Do I look you look you look good oh, no. you look ready to go you look, look you look like a woman on the go <laughs> you look like a five minute woman on the go thank you so much uh and i just uh, position the chair for for evangelic so that we can just continue with uh the, today we are busy with leadership stuff and uh today i've got uh, evangelic with me here uh, and she she received such a lot on her journey and every single thing that she received as experience on a journey with uh, right from a child, Scarlett, the little baby that we will discuss soon, and uh, this whole incident about her cochleas and what happened with the baby, and then also a journey with Mrs. South Africa. Every single thing got to do with leadership and leadership skills and qualities, and it gives me such great joy just to interview her today based on those things and leadership is about influence well let, let me not waste any time uh tell me a little bit about your wedding day i i just want to know who's this lucky guy that uh remember back in the day i was like yeah you're not just gonna marry any guy and then then you this guy walked in there with a guitar and then he started to teach how to play guitar and it's like i asked oh, eventually who's this guy tell us a little about about your your your, your wedding day and stuff like that and then we'll move on. Okay, so this is Ashley Adams. Yes. <laughs> my husband. Um, my wedding day was on the 21st of March, mm -hmm. 2015. So um, we're getting six years in March. That is something that's like, oh, I can't believe our time has <laughs> gone by so fast. And yeah, it was just meant to be. <laughs> yes, <laughs> praise the Lord. <laughs> Well, and, and out of this wonderful marriage, we had kids there. That's Ashley sitting there and Evangelique yeah, there on his lap. And then there's two beautiful children out of marriage. And uh, just tell us a little about the kids there before we move into to, to Scarlett's story. Um, so Scarlett is the oldest. She's four years old. And then Isaiah, he is two years old. Yes. Yeah. So so, so uh, what are they doing? Are they, uh, are you, are they at home? They, what are you doing? They're still at school, nursery school at the moment. Mm -hmm. And yeah, they go three times a week and the other two days of the week they are at home with us. Scarlett goes to therapy um, once a week. So we try to keep them together because we're at the stage of grooming Isaiah into helping Scarlett Great. as well. Great. And there's a beautiful picture of uh, Scarlett there. And just, just before we move into this beautiful story, I'm going to throw this ball at you. This is part of my, my show. And then wherever you're thumb lands that's what you will uh, read and also do it doesn't matter what it is so for instance once they try to make someone laugh i don't know how you're going to do that maybe you laugh and i laugh i'm not sure you better hope it doesn't end up there right so i'm going to throw that where's your thumb there what is he saying read for us 
What feelings may need a coping skill? Yes. What feelings need most probably do you think needs a coping skill? Anxiety. Anxiety. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think anxiety is something that is very, very important for everybody, including me. You throw me and my thumb lens on this one that says, I feel the most stress when... Oops, when do I feel stress? That's now a thing. Must I throw that back to the audience? When do you feel stress? <laughs> so you have to answer it. When do you feel stress? Uh, when do you feel the most stress? Come, come. let me speak to, to, to JC there. When... Just before a show, right? Now you feel most stressed just before a show or before... Yes, when you have a lot to do and you feel stressed, specifically around that. Stress is something that, that everybody, there's good stress and bad stress, and everybody needs stress um, uh, in order to be functional. Eventually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you to, to talk a little bit about uh, Scarlet and your experience. But before we get there, I'm kind of starting with the end, end in mind. Uh, so that is a, that is a cochlea. And uh, everybody can see it now on the screen. And the reason why I start with that is that so when you share the story, that people will have a form of understanding what a cochlea exactly is. So uh, everybody can see that. I'm not sure with the with the with the uh, the padlock there on the other side. Can can the, can everybody see it there? So that's a cochlea. And I'm going to show you another picture about the cochlea now. And I'm going to eventually just to talk us through that picture on the cochlea. Right on top there. Where do you think we should start? Yeah, yeah, with the electrode, yeah, the electrode contact, the, with your original cochlea within your ear. That's yeah. everyone is born with a cochlea. You know what I didn't know about a cochlea? Only with Scarlett's operation, I've learned that everybody's cochlea is already developed to uh, an adult cochlea, so it doesn't grow size. with you. The yeah. size is already an adult cochlea. Rather interesting. You would think that uh, as you grow older, that the cochlea will grow older as well with you. But that's the original cochlea, then everybody's born with a cochlea. So t tell, talk us through there, please. Okay, so what you were speaking about now, um, the electric um, contacts, which is basically what the cochlea is. Mm -hmm. It's what replaces the sound in your cochlea. Mm -hmm. So that's what they place inside of your ear mm -hmm. to replace the cochlea that you were speaking about that mm -hmm. stays the same size um, from birth to adulthood. And then on the outside of the head, which you see on the top over there is the coil. Yes. And then um, the coil is the outside part of the actual what cochlea. What you can head. see, you can yes. see it on the outside of you little scarlet. On the yeah. outside yeah. of your head. And that is works somewhat like a magnet mm -hmm. towards the inside, which is actually the implant. Mm -hmm. So where you see implant, mm -hmm. that is like the... No, how do I explain without yeah, pointing? The, the, yeah, <laughs> the, the inside you can point. It doesn't matter. Okay. I don't know if you, if we, if we Let on the, see. if we can point there. It doesn't matter. There's, I think there's a camera on you there. You you can point there. The outside there is a coil, and then on the inside the the, that says implant. implant yeah. yeah. So that's under the skin. Under the skin. You can't see that. It's under the skin. So when you put a coil in it, like it like clicks there because it's a magnet. Yes, it's magnet. It's and the it's two opposites is there. Shaved mm. into the skull. Yeah. So it's supposed to feel flush. Yeah. But because of Scarlett's age, hers isn't as flush. Flush, yeah. yeah. And then over here is your audio processor, mm. which hangs on top of the ear. Yes. And that's where many people make the mistake thinking it's a hearing aid. Yes, it's not a hearing aid. Yes, so that is just there to could, like grab the sound. Yes. So that's basically your microphone okay. and the audio processor, yes. So, yeah, so the sound goes through the piece that looks like the actual hearing aid that hangs on your ear yeah. which then goes through the processor connects through to the coil which sends the signals to the implant which then sends the signals man to the you can't coil. believe yeah. you can't believe signs like uh that that coil piece there if you can just point there because there's a camera on you there That's that coil piece there is connected to the the the, the, the artificial part is literally connected to the nerve yes and that fuse into the brain and uh, for those people that don't know if you just allow me like uh, every normal person have about a thousand ear a thousand hair ear on every side and then you you hear by waves i didn't didn't know that but you hear by waves and then, like your name, somebody called my name, Carl. And every time when your mother say, Carl, Carl, the waves form a, a bending on the ear hair. And it and it's registered in your brain. 
with with Scarlett, she's, there's only 24 per side, and that's the reason why she needs to do therapy and so on. But I am going to invite you into the journey now. It's most probably not the easiest thing uh, to talk about, but it's not the easiest thing to talk about. But um, I want Evangelique most probably just to, to to take us into this journey, take us back for the first time where you where you pick up that Scarlett is deaf. That from that moment, take us from that moment, and then just uh, talk us through the story. Okay, so we had a nanny, mm-hmm. and both myself and Ashley worked full time. Mm-hmm. So the nanny was with Scarlett constantly. So there's certain things, there's an advantage to a nanny, and there's a disadvantage as well. And I would say the disadvantage would be that you're not with your child as much to notice certain small things mm-hmm. in the time that you would if you were with your child constantly. Mm-hmm. And um, one day I was with scarlet at home and it was just the two of us and scarlet was about 14 months Mm -hmm. and um i was in the bathroom and when i use the bathroom i leave the door open so that you know with the toddler with kids of course yeah you want to make sure you know if you're hands on (laughs) with them all the time yeah yes so um scarlet was crying mommy 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 Mm because she thought i wasn't there Mm -hmm. and then um she walked past the bathroom and I was like, Scarlett, yeah, my, yeah, my, yeah, my. And she carried on walking mm-hmm. um, past me. Mm-hmm. And then I kind of realized that she's not reacting to me mm-hmm. calling her. It, 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 it what, 14 months? This was around about 14, 14 months, months, yes. Yeah. Um, and then this was December. And then um, I followed her throughout the house as she was looking for me. And I'm speaking behind her, Scarlet, mm-hmm. Scarlet, noticing that she's still walking from room to room looking for me. Mm-hmm. And then eventually she got to the end of the house and there was nowhere else to go but mm-hmm. turn around. Mm-hmm. And as she turned around, she saw me and started laughing mm-hmm. and said, Mommy. And then that's when I realized something is wrong because how I've been walking behind you. If you're not going to mm-hmm. hear my voice, you're at least going to hear my footsteps. Yeah, let's quickly reverse it a little bit. At that point in time, she could say, Mommy. Why yeah. could she say mommy at that point in time? Because she wasn't born deaf. Okay. Yeah. So we're not too sure when exactly at which point, she yeah. lost her hearing, mm-hmm. but there were certain words that she knew. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's when I noticed something's not right. So she could mommy, mommy, mommy okay. constantly. Okay. And then um, I called Ashley and I told him what happened and what's wrong. And, mm-hmm. you know, there's still that fear mm-hmm. within you. Mm-hmm. And then I thought, let's test it. And I put her favorite thing on. At that time, it was Hoopla Kids. Mm. And Hoopla Kids is basically singing mm. and dancing constantly. And I put it on mute, mm. but Scarlett was still dancing. Mm. So then that's when it registered something. Something is surely wrong, wrong with the hearing. Because I'll be dancing, but mm. there's silence. Yeah. And then that's when I told Ashley, we started doing like tests around the house. And yeah, that's how I realized something must be wrong. Talk, talk to me about the, the operation then. Uh, how, what was that journey like? Oh, this was a, that was a hard time. Yeah, eh? This was a very difficult time for me. Um, I can say for Ashley as well. Mm-hmm. But um, speaking for myself, this was really difficult. Um, worth going in, you still have hope mm-hmm. kind of a thing. So we met another family that had, before going for the tests, we met another family that has a daughter with cochlear implants. But before we get there, yeah. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna go back a little. Remember the first time myself and 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 and, and my wife, um, we accompanied you and Ashley and and and, and um, uh, little Scarlett to uh, the doctor. And uh, at that point in time, we were still hoping that it was just wax. Yeah. That was now in January, was, the, yeah. the January of that year. The January. Yeah. yeah, we we hoped it was still wax. And what was that experience like there? That was. I'm not too sure how to explain. When they did, she laid on the chair and they did the ear test. And the ear test that they did, they put the machine in your ear mm-hmm. and it makes the frequent sound that's mm. like a beep. Yeah, it's very, very it's high frequency. Very sound. high frequency, yeah, in frequency. And then me and Ashley standing there, we could hear it, but Scarlett wasn't making a yes. reaction to it. And the louder you went, she still just sat there. Mm. But everybody standing around could in the hear room, it could and hear this was sound, literally in her and ear it was in her ear mm. yeah and she didn't blink or anything nothing she just sat there mm. <laughs> so that was a bit difficult and at that point i don't really know what happened further on in the room because 
emotionally I couldn't took it, t- um, take it. Mm. So I walked out of the room. So that I'm must, but sure. that must <laughs> have been a very difficult time for you. Yes, it mm. was. And then they suggested maybe it could still be wax or uh, ear infection or something like that. And that's when further tests were needed to and be taken. And ultimately, the operation. And now, tell us a little about Scarlett now. Where is she now? What is she doing now? If you if you look at, at her now, how many months later now? What's the progress? Tell us a little about that because that's a celebratory <laughs> side for Scarlett. Yeah, so Scarlett has um, two year, uh, hearing age is two years old. Um, so basically the same age as Isaiah. Okay. So they're on par with each other. Okay. But she is just such a blessing. Um, we struggle, not struggle, we still work daily for her to be on par with her own age. Mm-hmm. But when you see the progress from where she was to where she is now, it's a big, big, big difference. difference. Yeah. You know, I know her because of my granddaughter, we spend a lot of time together and then uh, I enjoy it. For the, I enjoy the sentences. She understands. She she can relate with everything. And I think the, the, the process is busy speeding up because uh, uh, the way the doctors explain at some point, she will grow she will uh a hearing age will will catch up with a real age yes. at some point most probably at the age of six or so yeah so she's still when, with the test that we've done she's still 12 months behind oh uh, 12 months behind yes so she's, she's one year behind a, one year behind okay yeah, with her speech and everything to catch up to her age so every month they, she grows in gradually yeah and uh, how long will that one year take to to, to grow into so that's dependent on us yeah. and what we do to help her get there because she has a year to catch up all right so once you pass a certain age it's more difficult difficult to catch up with your age and you'll always be a is she is she, in a, is she in a good age to catch up yes as long as she's not five years old right yeah. so she has a year so we've got a lot of work to do there to get her through yes yeah <laughs> now tell me about that experience what did you learn out of that that journey as a mother and what what can you encourage others out there because there was was there times of depression was there times that you wanted to give up was there times of tears what what happened to you yeah, there was a lot of questions. You mm-hmm. question God mm-hmm. <laughs> the most. Mm-hmm. Um, I did a lot of things in my life that I thought was the right thing to mm-hmm. do. Mm-hmm. Um, waited for marriage um, before I gave myself up. Um, certain things like that, that you feel played a part. God, where were you? I did certain things. That was not my phone, eh? <laughs> Guys, that was not my phone. Whose phone was that? We, we should shoot our, switch our phones off. I'm equally yeah. guilty and I'm hosting this program. But that was not my phone. Uh, so, so, sorry, Evangelic, you go ahead. So, yeah, I was saying there's certain things you do for your future. Yes. And then when things don't go according to plan, you yeah. somewhat blame God. Oh, yeah. I did this right. I did that right. Yes. I did that right. So, yeah. what's this punishment for? Yes. So, you kind of go through a depression where you call it punishment. Yes. For lack of a better term. Man. So, um that depression does it. Uh, and that, that, yeah. that happened a lot with people. They, 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 they go through certain things and they think they're responsible for it. Yes. But what was, your, what was your experience out of that? You, you real, you've realized that it's not God. God yes. didn't punish you. It was, it's not God's mandate. God don't want to punish you. Yes. W- what's your take on that? Yeah, with being Christian as well, you believe in a cure. You believe in there's going to be this miracle. A miracle, yeah. Yeah. So lots of times people said, think about it, that this cochlear implant is your miracle. Mm -hmm. And then I always think about the story when the guy was drowning in the sea Mm -hmm. and God sends someone with a boat and he's like, no, I'm waiting for God. I'm waiting for God to help. (laughs) And then when he dies, and then God sent the the helicopter and God (laughs) sent, and then he died and he said, God, how is it that you didn't save my God said, but my God, I sent the boat, I sent the helicopter. (laughs) So I think about it in that. Yes. The miracle per se wasn't there. Yes. But the miracle in the cochlear implant was there. Yes. That things just happened to work scarlet is one of the only girls um little kids that got the cochlear implants within two months mm. of finding out the process was extremely and the lord speed the process yes. up that was i mean <laughs> i was i was there with that process god just uh, there was just favor and the guy who did the operation was the guy who started the original operation in south africa yeah that was just a bonus to us so. and with his with his experience yes. you know what um i want to move over to a very exciting time in your life of course you eventually um, um 
sign yourself on into this wonderful Mrs. South African pageant. And, uh, you know, I was surprised that you, that you did that. So talk to me a little about what happened to you and how, how, how did you get to that point where you literally picked the pen up or type on the computer that I want to be in this? Because we didn't know. It was like a surprise fact. It was like, what? Evangelique? Is it possible? <laughs> Talk us through that because, you know, because this is exactly where the leadership stuff is going to start kicking in. Yes. Because people can start from nowhere and pick themselves up and make the best of their lives. And they, they come alive, literally come alive. So, so that decision there, how did, you, how did you pick yourself up after Scarlet and that uh, bad journey? And what, what we're not mentioning is just after Scarlet, you had uh, immediate uh, Isaiah. Yeah, after and, uh, Scarlet switched on the day after Isaiah was born. My yeah. goodness, <laughs> she was still in bandages and stuff. Yeah. And and Hosea and Isaiah Hosea. Yeah. <laughs> and Isaiah was born. Yeah. So that was a difficult time. It was a difficult Talk us through time. how did you end up with getting involved with Mrs. South Africa? So like I said, I was a makeup artist um, for Mrs. South Africa two years back. And honestly I didn't know that there was still a Mrs. South Africa. And being behind the scenes and you see women from day one to how they are when they walk out of Mrs. South Africa, you s- kind of see the progress. You could see the you transformation. Yes, you see the transformation. And you kind of desire that transformation. Yes. So we just spoke about Scarlett's situation now, and in all of that, I lost Evangelique. Mm. My creativity, mm. I just knew how to do the same thing every mm. day. Um, I used to be someone that people used to admire the way I dressed. They mm. would say, oh, I like your outfit. I like yes. And I turned into a jeans and tackies girl. Mm-hmm. And that wasn't me. I mm. was someone that was creative even in my dress my hair was always a color Mm -hmm. (laughs) it was never just black yes everything about me was always a statement to who Mm -hmm. i am so are you saying that for for those watching out there it's possible to get to a place of demoralization so once you were this person with this wonderful dreams and vision objectives and goals and all of a sudden after this terrible journey uh, with the deafness of your daughter, the, the birth of your, your son, it's possible to fall back and be just be demoralized. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, you were asking me what did I learn from Scarlett's experience. Yeah. So it came to a point where I was like, um, so we started seeing progress. Mm. And then um, I always use the story, um, a mother's hope but a daughter's dream kind mm-hmm. of a thing. And I got to the point where my hope is for her to be inspired. Mm -hmm. But she can't have her dream if I'm not living out mine. So um, I went to Mrs. South Africa's page and how I got there was like, okay, I know what I want to do. I want to empower other mothers Mm -hmm. that might be going through a different scenario maybe not with deafness Mm. but maybe you have a girl that is down syndrome Mm -hmm. or anything in a form your son struggling to speak or something Mm. in the form of i'm struggling as a mother yes even if there's nothing wrong with your kid but that every day doing the same thing you lose yourself you're not doing your hair anymore Mm. certain things like that but i knew i need to fix myself first Mm. and that is why I like that. I like that because if you want to get to wherever you want to be in life, you have to fix yourself. What a wonderful line. You need to fix yourself. And that's how you enroll and that's how your journey started. Mm -hmm. I just want to show them a picture there of you there on the ramp. That was uh, was on Friday. My last day. Tell us a little about about that picture. So this was my last walk on my South Africa journey. Mm. Um. It was really empowering in terms of the confidence. I, I'm somebody that doesn't like to be in the spotlight. I'm the one that wants to encourage from the back. Yeah. But like I said, I needed to fix myself, pick myself up so that I can make a difference to the next person. And that walk on the stage was that moment for me. How did your yeah. confidence develop? Because you know what, in my book here on uh, on leadership, uh, for those that would love to get this book, it's not in the bookshops, it's at my office if you'd like to get it. Uh, but on page 39 in this book on the qualities of a leader, one of those qualities are uh, to have, uh, one of the leadership qualities that you should have is, to, is, is confidence. You should, have, have, you should have confidence and self-awareness. So how did you develop your confidence? 
So I developed my Mr. South Africa helped me a lot. We are speaking about yes, that exactly. As well, that's the point. That's yeah. where I got Evangelique back. Um, aside from other things, this played the biggest role. So for me, um, my confidence came back. With so are you saying Evangelique is back? Yes, Evangelique. Good is morning, back. Evangelique. <laughs> Evangelique is, is back, back with a yeah. bang. <laughs> Tell us how, how how did you develop your confidence? So my confidence was in terms of emotional. My confidence came back around being around so many empowering women. Mm -hmm. So you see, you hear the stories, you see the progress of other women. Um, you then think about your why. Mm -hmm. Why do I want confidence? Mm -hmm. Why? You know certain things. What's my dreams? You what's start my to vision, address what's my yourself. Goals? Yes, and mm. you start looking at your past, and you're like, "Where did it go wrong?" Yes, and then from there, you you don't really compare, but you inspired mm -hmm. by someone else. So, so you you you're, you're on a rather good point there because um, it seems like if you want confidence, it doesn't matter in what you should surround yourself with people with confidence. Yes. And and somehow confidence have the have, have, a, have a way of rubbing off on you. Yes. And you could see people walking there while you were still doing the makeup before you enroll. Yes. You could see how people develop from day one, literally to the final uh, catwalk. Yes. Literally, yes. literally, literally. Well, that's rather interesting. Is there anything else that you'd like to add on confidence before we move on to anything else? Um, Something that I'm missing out? Yeah, like with the self-awareness side. Mm -hmm. Like you need to know who you are mm -hmm. and what you want to achieve mm -hmm. with your confidence mm -hmm. that it doesn't form a boastful self. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So is, 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 it, is there a possibility that, you, that, you, that, that, that confidence can come across as being boastful? Yes. Yeah, so but sometimes people misinterpret confidence. You know that sometimes you're so strong in what you believe, and they have such little of most probably they uh, they have a, a form of low self-esteem. They're not in their own skin, and and when you come across in knowing your subject and know what you do and you like what you do, it come across as as arrogant. Did you also find that that when people do you think sometimes people think you arrogant? Maybe I'm not too sure, but what I can say about being the right kind of confidence is that when you're confident enough with yourself, mm. you know how to read the person next to you. Mm -hmm. You know when to say something else so that your confidence rubs off mm -hmm. onto the next person. So I think that's where confidence also has a fine line of, there's a form of I can rub my confidence off on you mm -hmm. with encouragement, with a nice compliment or something like that. Mm -hmm. Or I can just be, I'm the only confident one in the room. No, no. one else is <laughs> there, kind of a thing. Yeah, that so. is true. Well, you know, I, I noticed on your, on, your, on your page yesterday, um, uh, you said the following, yeah. guard your vision. You say it's so easy to get uh, sidetracked. Don't allow talks and mishaps and past failures determine your width. Your vision is placed. Just continue to preserve, make moves, and make it happen. It might take longer than expected, but don't give up. Protect those dreams. Why did you post that yesterday? So, I was in a competition at the end of the day. <laughs> yes. Talk, talk to me. Talk and, to me. And um, the competition, as much as I went there for my self-growth, my self-esteem um, to move forward. Mm -hmm. I also went for the crown. That's mm -hmm. what you technically go for. You go for the crown because <laughs> you can try and work on yourself at home. Yes. <laughs> but um, with Mrs. South Africa, there is a bigger picture at the end of the day. Yes. But obviously, like, I didn't make it to the finals. Okay. But so uh, something that I do a lot on my social media is that when you see something like this, I'm yeah. speaking to myself. Okay. So... I encourage you, myself. You're speaking to us, speaking to yourself. Yes. You show <laughs> us how you feel. Yes. So I always encourage myself through my statuses, if okay. that makes sense. All right. Um, so what I was saying here is like, guard your vision. I know what I went in for. Yes. Don't let the fact that someone judged me. Mm. Um, you don't know why you weren't yeah. chosen you for know, the competition. Just, just on that one point, uh, for people watching Idols and all the other uh, platforms, um, um, what's the other one that they also have on, 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 on TV uh, where people sing and then you they pick you, whatever it is. The voice. The voice. They've got <laughs> such a red, they've got a red chair there and they yeah. spin it around and they 
boom, press a button and you and they spin. There are times that the, the people don't even make it. Yeah. First, second or third place. But they 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 more in a public phase, they've got more albums out. They uh, I cannot even think of somebody, but I know of cases like that. So there are times in the school atmosphere where a teacher will tell you, you, you will accomplish nothing in life and you prove the teacher wrong. Mm-hmm. So you can say, you, you say that even though you're not in the top 25 now, yeah. that uh, the confidence is enough for you to take you further. Yes. Or that's the one side. The other side is you can now completely give up and say, oh, you can go in a pretty party, go sit in a corner. What's and, wrong with and, me? Why and erase yeah. everything that you accomplished now. Yes. Mm. So now you go back to your past failures. Yes. And then you start questioning everything about you and the whole process you went through to get to that um, walk that the picture you showed yeah. would all be for nothing. The catwalk. Yes. That, that will just be for nothing. <laughs> it will just be for nothing. Exactly. So Let me just get that picture up again. So, so you should, even though you've dropped out of Mrs. South Africa yeah. and somebody judge you for whatever reasons not to go through. Like I make a joke, since the age of 13, I wore board shorts with my swimming costume. Okay. And for the first time in my life, I had to be judged without the board shorts. Oh my so word. My mind goes to, you need that level of mindset change. Yes. To move forward. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You know what? You mentioned a few other things like about integrity. The, on your journey and that is also one of uh, uh, the characteristics of a, a leader um, um, the confidence is, was the first one the second one is integrity what do you mean by integrity integrity <laughs> oh um, sometimes with this topic you kind of get a bit emotional because it was just on Friday so there's a it's lot still of things. fresh with it's you. It's still fresh, yeah. It's not that you feel less of a person, but in order for you to have integrity for, I don't know how to put this. Um, I don't. I made notes <laughs> for what I was going to say, but now that I'm sitting here, I'm like, how do I explain this in the best way possible for everybody to understand? For everybody to and understand, then because your yeah. mind is ringing now, do you want to get through your notes quickly if you can find it? It's if not. Right here. Bag. Is it okay? Wait, we're gonna we're gonna ask one of the, the camera guys just to come around Sorry, and help us. Yeah, just just get to that note because integrity is an important part. And uh, if I can just in the meantime, while while Evangelique is looking at the notes, that we're about to 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 to, to close this wonderful session here. Uh, leaders produce more leaders. Let me see. Leaders uh, visionary. We discussed that. Develop and train. Leaders are proactive. Uh, yes, here we go. Leaders have integrity on page 40 in my book. It says, uh, understanding integrity is to, be, uh, is to be the quality of being honest and having strong moral principles. Uh, this is what I'm saying in here. I don't know what Evangelique's contribution will be uh, around integrity. Are you there? Yes. Okay, so, fine. Um, sorry, I just had to look quickly. That's good. So, um, with the integrity part, with my journey, what I've learned mm-hmm. through integrity is in this process you meet so many people that can like again sidetrack your morals yes they can sidetrack your beliefs yes because at the end of the day you're all fighting yes. for something correct so it's easy to lose what you want to stand for yes it's easy to lose your main goal and then i see all of this can, can and I, now can, we jump back can i think because can, that person looks like they're doing better on all that right road. can i can i can i most probably use a, a simple illustration here and yeah. you you jump on that and you tell me if that if that is if that is true or not what about uh there's uh, so many girls 50 girls yeah. and everybody wants a crown and they started talking amongst one another is there a possibility that you can fall into that trap is that most yeah. probably what you mean by integrity and they they start bickering backbiting getting on one another with your models yeah i'm somebody that doesn't like conflict okay so in terms with your example now when that happens Mm -hmm. i'm the one that backs away Mm -hmm. instead of let's carry on the conversation Mm -hmm. so in terms of knowing your models and where you stand with who you are Mm -hmm. don't fall into the trap yes of Of demoralizing others yes and what's going on around you like i use the example of knowing your purpose Mm -hmm. why are you there Mm -hmm. don't look at the next person their journey looks more interesting and Mm -hmm. you jump onto what they're Mm -hmm. saying 
stay true to who you are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I see we've got eight minutes left there. My producer was just telling me that I've got eight minutes left there. But this, are we doing well? Don't you worry. I, I like I like the conversation. And you know what? Just to see you moving on. There's one thing that you also mentioned to me that there's, there's the authenticity about, about yourself. What is it about that beautiful word, authenticity? I made this joke the other day and I was saying, I'm the kind of person that I'm so, I try so hard to be, authentic in the sense of I am who I am. Yes. I'm not being in your on own skin. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I even made this joke saying like if I post I am using a Catrice lipstick. Yeah. It is literally a Catrice lipstick that I believe in. <laughs> <laughs> I am not gonna put on Mac and because Catrice is giving me something I'm just going to post that it is Catrice. Yes. And then as well with what I stand for mm. I say what I mean, mm. and I'm not going to stray away from what I want to bring across. If, if, let's say our listeners out there, what, what, what is it that they can take from this? If they say, what do you mean? What do you mean that I must be authentic? Stay true to who you are. Stray, stay through to who stay you true, are. Yeah, to who you are. Mm. Um, don't let somebody else determine what others want to see. Mm-hmm know who you are yes. and carry that forth because Fantastic. that's the only way you're going wow well, you're doing absolutely yeah. well thank you so much for all that contributors there's, there's just maybe two and then i will close the the, the fearlessness and the in, in, in the courage that courageousness what 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 can we take home from you around that with your journey within the, the mrs south africa journey and also in link with because every single thing that you touch on was is literally leadership stuff yeah. and for those watching um i do have a book out on leadership and um, this is on insights on leadership as you know this is the inside show in any case so the qualities that's in here is exactly the qualities without even knowing that it's that it says right in this book and you experience that yeah. and there are so many people watching out there they are experiencing exactly that qualities so on fearlessness and, and courage what, what 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 contribution will you bring to the table so we learned a lot about we the sponsors that you need to get and okay. certain things so you learn not to be fearless. Like I said, I went into a little bubble where I lost myself. Yeah. But there were a lot of things that I had to accomplish to lose the scared mm-hmm. evangelique okay. and come out of my shell and not be scared to ask when I need help. For a sponsor. For a sponsor. You look a person so in the eye and say, give me money. <laughs> yes, it gave me courage. It gave me, if you haven't been in a boardroom, yeah. you now know certain things. Yes. And that is what it did for me. It brought back that confidence in terms of I am not scared to ask for what I need yes. in order for me to get to where I need to go. So the, one of the qualities of, of being a, a good leader is to be fearless, yes. meaning you have a vision, you have an objective. And if you believe in it and if there's enough passion. You go for it, it, and you and you and you, and it doesn't matter what the enemy throws at you. It doesn't matter the circumstances. It doesn't matter the pain. You just go for it. Well, the 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 last one that I just want to discuss with you here. I've got five minutes before the end of my show here today, and I'm telling you, I'm enjoying the show so much here on the Inside Show. I want you please uh, just to tune in every day on the Inside Inside Show. And today I've got the the wonderful Evangelic Adams here, and. uh, the last one is on the influence aspect and that is so important and I opened this the show this this morning around how important it is to influence and then um, if you look at uh, my examples that I use the teacher the mother the drug lord the, the CEO the manager the pastor the bishop the evangelist the apostle all those people influence people I influence people on the Sunday influence people on this sh- on this set here what do you mean by influence uh, through the lenses of uh, Mrs. South Africa Influence in terms of you came there to influence a lot of other women. Yes. So um, there's the difference between you can be a negative influence Mm -hmm. or you can be a positive influence. Yes. And I look at it in terms of something that's big in South Africa right now is the whole POC argument. Mm -hmm. A good influencer would be somebody that's giving answers, Mm -hmm. somebody that is influencing positivity as well around the topic. We address the problems, Mm -hmm. but let's be positive and not add extra anger to it Mm -hmm. as where you can be negative and just complain about everything that is bad. Yes. So that's also with influence. I've learned that be positive to what you she yes <laughs> don't just and look project at the out there because what you w- yeah. what you're actually saying in essence is that 
don't underestimate who you are. Yes. So if you're a father in a house, the, you influence your kids if you like it or not. You don't have to uh, uh, tell them every day. It's by observation. Mm. If you're the teacher or the CEO or the person in the community, uh, the, the preacher, the pastor, you influence. And, 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 and it's important what you leave behind. It's almost like you drip influence. Yes. It could be positive or it could be negative. And that's the power of leadership as well. You can rather influence positively or you influence negatively. Well, everybody, my time is up. And uh, I, I thank God for this wonderful uh, journey, Evangelique Adams. Uh, once, can you remember once uh, I, I, I sent you something the, and I said Evangelique Hendricks and you corrected me, you say Adams. <laughs> Everybody out there, thank you so much for watching today. It was so great here, Evangelique. Thank you so much for coming on my set here today. We are on five days a week, and uh, tomorrow we are on with a show called uh, Producer Talk with Joan. That's on Thursdays. Every Thursday, Talk with Joan. Half past 12, the, you, you, you can catch it there. What I'm trying to say here, hit that bell. What you should do is you, you f subscribe and you hit that bell. I just want you every single time when we come on, please just watch it. It will be so great. We honor and respect you for, for following us. And thank you so much for your time out. Well, from my side, uh, thank you once again. I'm signing out once and twice and three times a lady. Goodbye for now. And I thank everybody. Evangelique, thank you so much. Goodbye.